The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is again our epistle reading for this past Sunday. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 7 right now, where Paul wrote, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. My dear friends in Christ, not because we have earned or deserved it, but as Paul says here, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. And, well, actually, if we thought about it, if we tried to earn or deserve it, the fact is, is that what we would do is we would only hurt our cause we would get ourselves further and further away from God. It can't be us because our deeds just don't qualify to earn something with God. So it's because of his great love for us that God made us alive with Christ. And what that means is that instead of being dead in our transgressions and sins, well now, by the grace of God, we're spiritually alive. And we're alive with Christ, he says here, meaning that instead of being the enemies of God that we were by nature because we were conceived and born in sin, now we're alive with Christ. We're on his side. We're part of God's believing family. Paul said, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Oh, we can understand his saying he raised us up in Christ because, well, by the grace of God, we're spiritually alive. But here he also says that he seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. How can Paul say that we're seated in the heavenly realms with Christ in heaven right now. We're still here on this earth. We're still living in this sinful world with all of its problems and troubles. However, the scriptures do often speak of a future event as if it were an accomplished fact. For example, we can think about on, on Monday, Thursday evening, as Jesus is there with his disciples, as he was celebrating the last needed Passover, the first Lord's Supper, as he was washing the disciples' feet. Well, that evening, Jesus prayed to his Father, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. At that time, the agonies of Good Friday, they weren't accomplished yet. But Jesus knew that he would endure those agonies, so he spoke of that work as if it were finished work. And in the same way, Paul here talks about the certainty of heaven for us who by the grace of God believe in Jesus. But then also we can think about it here when he talks about, well, by the grace of God through faith, it's as if we're already in heaven, but right now we're part of God's spiritual kingdom. And so it's as if we really are there in heaven already with our Lord Jesus. Well, then Paul tells us why God in his love and mercy raised us to life and seated us in the heavenly realms with Christ. He did that, he says, 
in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. What Paul and the Ephesians were able to do is they were able to marvel at and be amazed at the incomparable riches of God's grace. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that believers throughout time have always been able to marvel at the incomparable riches of God's grace. God is so good to us. And the fact that he gives us his forgiveness, the fact that he gives us, well, the time of grace that he gives us, that tells us about the incomparable riches of God's grace. Just the fact that God allows us to continue to exist, that is proof of the incomparable riches of God's grace. God could say, I've had enough of you. But instead, God has continued, continued to say, I'm going to give the world more time. More time so that the Holy Spirit can work on, well, more hearts, well, to build us up and strengthen us in our faith, and then also to work on hearts of those who don't yet believe so that he can show them their sin and show them their Savior and, and show them God's amazing grace. Be thankful for God's amazing grace, for the incomparable riches of his grace, for the time of grace that he gives you. Always strive to get closer to our Savior and his word so that you can keep on growing in your faith, so that the Holy Spirit can keep on building you up and strengthening you in your faith, and so that you can keep on sharing your Savior, your faith, His Word, and God's amazing grace, so that more and more people can be blessed with the incomparable riches of God's grace, which you and I are so blessed to enjoy right now. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, help us always to be amazed at the incomparable riches of your grace which you keep on giving to us so that we sinners can rejoice in our salvation and work at sharing your amazing grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.